Good evening. My name is Dorian Lewis, and I will be your moderator for this evening's class. Welcome to another lecture given by members of the Southfield, Michigan class. This is a school, not a church. Neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as the result of a divine vision and revelation given unto our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We held classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. The Southfield, Michigan class was established in 1997. At this time, I'd like to introduce to you the Dean of the Southfield class, Dr. Marvin Lewis, the President, Dr. Edward Ewell, and the Vice President, is Dr. Ronald Atkins. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, as they are contained in the original Hebrew texts. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted with Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted with God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and are not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. We now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia will prove that neither the Hebrew, Greek, nor Latin languages have any letters or characters in the alphabet that will produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true name of our Heavenly Father and his son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit. And in this state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We've drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on the chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man cannot perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given unto salvation and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should all ask ourselves is what was the name of the savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. 
After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of the most holy place, the holy place, and the courts round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The primary constitutional aims and objectives are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without the distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons, operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained that there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the, Mess the Messiah, excuse me, with the hope of an immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan, speak the truth. And at this time, we will have a prayer given by Dr. Zamar Gregory, followed by a scripture reading, which will be Ephesians, the second chapter, read by Dr. April Lewis. Dr. Zamar Gregory, are you able to unmute? Okay, no worries. We will then have a prayer given by Dr. Pedro Dominguez. Uh, maybe Dr. Dominguez is unable to unmute as well. We will have a prayer given by Dr. Paula Phillips Brown. I'd like to say good evening to the class. May we all bar our heart and mind to give thanks to Yahweh Elohim through Yahshua always for another opportunity to learn about him as he truly is and actually, actually exists, to keep us always steadfast in this gospel and keeping the integrity and truth to worship our heavenly father in spirit and in truth. And with that said, I'd like to say hallelujah. 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 Good evening class. This evening scripture lesson will be Ephesians, the second chapter. And I will be reading out of the Holy Name Bible containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts. And that's revised by A.B. Trina of the Scripture Research Association. That's Ephesians, the second chapter. And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in times past you walked according to the course of this world, 
according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our deportment in times past and the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But Yahweh, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with the Messiah, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Yahshua the Messiah, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Yahshua the Messiah. For by grace are ye saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of Yahweh, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Yahshua the Messiah unto good works, which Yahweh hath before ordained that we shall walk in them. Wherefore remember that ye being in time past heathens in the flesh, who called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without the Messiah, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without Elohim in the world. But now in Yahshua the Messiah, ye were, sorry, ye who were formerly were far off are made nigh by the blood of the Messiah, excuse me, for he is our peace who have made both one and have broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances. For to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto Yahweh in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby and came and preached peace to you, which were far off, and to them that were nigh. For through him, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the sons and of the household of Yahweh, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Yahshua the Messiah himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple of Elohim, unto Elohim, excuse me, in whom ye also are builded together for a habitation of Elohim through the Spirit. That was Ephesians, the second chapter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like to welcome everyone out to today, tonight's lecture, and um, we thank you all for joining us. Tonight will be regular class. Uh, tonight's readers will be myself and Dr. April Lewis. But if we're struggling to find something and you have the scripture, feel free to unmute yourself and read. And for our first speaker, it is a pleasure to call on from the Southfield class, Dr. Mary Taylor. Good evening, class. Good evening. Yes. Um, okay, I, I lost the scripture. <laughs> I was looking at it and I just lost the page. But anyway, um uh, I can't see where I want to start it. I really enjoyed it what I was listening to because I've been faith been on my mind a lot here lately about faith and um and could you give me Romans, the 10th chapter? This is what I've been reading here lately. Romans, the 10th 10 chapter. 10 uh, and yeah. 1. All right, yes. this is Romans 10 and 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to Yahweh for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of Yahweh 
but not according to knowledge. Okay, hold it right there. So you're saying have a zeal, feeling at them, but not according to knowledge. And coming down to this class, and y'all should sit in the me seat, y'all, like, showing us that we have to know something about our Heavenly Father, his name, his purpose pattern plan, and that he goes according to a pattern. Um, okay, go ahead. Keep on. Go ahead. Finish. For they, being ignorant of Yahweh's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of Yahweh. Yes. So they hear the name, tell them the name is Yahweh. So I'm hearing from people, oh, we know his name is Yahweh and stuff. That's, you know, I said, but it's more to, than just the name, his name, Yahweh. I said, no one goes to the Father but through the Son. You have to know the name of Yahshua. That's, he's the intercessor to Yahweh. Mm -hmm. So, um, so them being ignorant of it and you, you, you um, taking the blood off your hands that preaching this gospel and stuff, hoping they were here. But like I said, it's, um, this has been happening to me a lot at uh, work lately. People have been asking me questions and stuff and then they want to dispute and I said, it's not nothing to dispute about. You know, I said, you know, tell me, look it up for yourself. And you know, you know, mm -hmm. his name and, and things like that, you know, and what he's doing is, you know, it's much more to it than you think. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I was telling them about Yahshua being into all those kind of ways, which I'm gonna read it probably next, I think it's the next paragraph, go ahead. Fourth mm -hmm. verse, for the Messiah is the end of the sacrificial law for the attain obtaining of righteousness to everyone that believe it. For Moses, Describe it the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But excuse me, but the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise: Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is to br bring Messiah down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring the Messiah up again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Okay. So he's saying that. Yeah, excuse me a minute. Okay. Um, so, like I said, we preach this gospel hoping that someone get, you know, Get something out of it because we all want our all our family and friends we want but you know we doing our job is preaching the gospel right. and we know that we can't you know all we can do is preach the gospel that's the saving souls that are preaching the gospel if they accept it mm -hmm. and and um I'm sorry, go ahead, finish reading. All right. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, Yahshua the Messiah, excuse me, I'm sorry. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that Yahshua is the Messiah and shalt believe in thine heart that Yahweh hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Okay. And that's what we learned down here that we you know out in that so-called church world, we read this and stuff with no understanding really and you know coming down to class you really understood what that meant that, that you gotta confess with your heart and mind you know that he that Joshua is the savior and you shall be saved because mm -hmm. I know a lot of us even me I used to always say all the time um I'm not able to really preach this gospel and stuff am I'm gonna be saved I mean because I'm not able to and I don't seem that like I'm but they said as long as you believe and stuff, it's not about how well you preach the gospel, but speaking the truth, though. That's just speaking the truth. And um, 
you can be saved. I believe, no, believing in thy heart that he actually did this. He died, he was buried, he, and he resurrected on the third day, according to scripture. And he mm. does this continually, continually through the whole Bible. It's all about his death, his burial, his resurrection. You know, blood, water, spirit. These three mm. are one. These three are one. Okay, go ahead. Mm. All right. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. And, but, excuse me, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no yeah. difference. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, of course. We always say, it, you know, it's a scripture in there. In the Bible, it says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Yahshua Messiah. And we say it all the time not ashamed of the gospel of Yahshua Messiah. So when folks speak and they say in Jesus and that, I speak of Yahshua. You know, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. All right. Go ahead. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Elohim over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For yeah, so now, okay, so now, like I said, there's no difference between Jews and the Greek, which is the Gentiles, Greek and the Gentile, because after I poured his, his um, spirit, um, the Jews was drafted in, what, seven years later? Was it seven years? I know it's in school, so I asked this question seven years later. Gentiles. And, um, the Gentiles, yeah, the Gentiles were drafted in seven years later to re to receive this um, promise of everlasting life. Okay, go ahead. For whosoever shall call upon the name of Yahweh shall be delivered. Yes. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Yes. So I would, okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. And how shall they, shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Yes, so that's, that's right. So that's where the gospel has to be, be preached. It has to be preached in order for them to hear. And because um, I had experience of talking to one and I, I spoke of Elohim and I was saying, and they told me, you, you making up names and stuff. I said, no, that's, I'm, that's not a name I'm making up. That's a divine title that Yahweh gave himself. I said, it's, it's, you know, it's out there. It's books, encyclopedias, stuff. You can look it up and stuff. The name Elohim. This is no, I said, this is the truth. It's not a joke. Okay, uh, go ahead. All right. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the glad tidings of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the evangel. For Isaiah saith, Yahweh, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing the word of Yahweh. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth, and their words unto the ends of the world. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by an unenlightened nation will I anger you. But Isaiah is very bold and saith, I was found by them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. But he saith to Israel, all day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. I know I was reading that earlier today, and we know, like I said, faith comes by hearing. You have to hear the gospel. The, and um, and it's, it's, it's beautiful. This gospel is beautiful. It's beautiful how he died, buried, resurrected, according to the scriptures. Mm. Not just one time, he, he, all through the scriptures and, and all these stories. Um, that's. Only thing really, really, I had on my mind tonight. Mm -hmm. um, with that, I, I'm gonna yield the floor. 
I hope somebody got something out of it. I mean, yes. I'm going I'm to yield the floor. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, Dr. Taylor. And for our next speaker, it is a pleasure to call on the president of the Southfield branch, Dr. Edward Ewell. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, well, I'm extremely glad to be here. Um, it's always a blessing to be a member or taking part of part taken into this great gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. And um, I'm truly thankful and feel blessed to be chosen to know about Yahweh's eternal purpose, pattern, and plan of salvation, which uh, has been spelled out uh, in the law of Moses, who wrote the first five books of the Bible, and in the prophets. Um, the whole book, that is the Old Testament, was written. Um, those two, if you want to separate the law and the testimony, they are the witnesses of the um, foundation. In other words, from the beginning to the end of the creation. And uh, get the uh, Moses chart up. Um, there's so much, and uh, if you can enlarge it a little, there's so much in this chart. And every time I look at it, it takes me back to where, uh, what made this possible, feasible, logical? In other words, if you looked at it for the first time, uh, it looked like scrambled eggs, but it is precisely um, designed and as an end product, that is, say, something that we can look at. It came from conceptual into graphic pictorial form. And we want to give thanks to Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley for having this stupendous divine vision and revelation that enable us to look at this chart. And there's um, an eternal or infinity, unfathomable information. In other words, there's no end to the information that's buried within this chart. So the things that you come to learn, know, and understand about it, uh, you want to definitely hold on to them because um, in it is the purpose, pattern, and plan of salvation, which was given in the scriptures, but no one had an understanding of uh, the things that were in the scriptures and now. Uh, in the scripture lesson, just skip two and go to uh, Ephesians 3 and 1. It just comes to mind that um, if we look at this chart and you see this divine vision and revelation, you got to look and say, well, wow, how is it possible that one man could see all of this information? In other words, he saw from eternity to eternity like it is spell out on the ages and dispensation. And he saw everything that went in between. And it's a stupendous vision because all of the information that was gathered, it's impossible for a human to have seen this and remembered it and then wrote it down and then drew pictures of it. Uh, he had people, instructed people to draw out this vision. And so, Looking at it from when Moses saw, um, I was just speaking to my grandson about the Exodus. And I say, well, the Genesis, um, as far as we know, it didn't take place until the children of Israel had left. And this is really miraculous to think that, say, some 1,490 years uh, of history that occurred with the children of Israel, and then out here on the um, at Mount Sinai, 
1490, before the birth year, before the birth of Yahshua, Moses saw what he wrote in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Say, wow, how could he write all of that unless he was in a super place? In other words, he was having a divine vision. So Moses saw um, the co-creation. And uh, I want to get just uh, Genesis 2 and read 1 through 4. And, and, and the reason I'm going just there is that it shows that eternal day or that day of eternity when, just read it, uh, Genesis 2, 1 through 4. Genesis. Go ahead. Maybe. Just Genesis 2 and 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all so, the hope of them. And, and I jumped a little ahead of myself, so. Moses is seeing this because he, in the first chapter, he's talked about how the uh, earth was born and, and then the spirit of Elohim moved across the face of the deep. But then this is later in his vision. Just start over again. So what he's actually seeing in writing. Mm -hmm. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished. So he saw that this, those first days were finished. In other words, he went through the first day, second day, third day, sixth day man created, and then the seventh day or the Sabbath, he rested. So then this is picking it up, Genesis 2 and 1. It's still a continuation of Moses' vision. Read. Mm -hmm. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, mm -hmm. and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, Elohim ended his work, which he had made. Mm -hmm. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And Elohim blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. So he blessed his whole creation and sanctified it, read. Because that in it, he had rested from all his work, which Elohim created and made. Mm -hmm. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. In the day. In the day. That's right. In the day, not seven days or six days, five, four, three, two, one. In other words, the day of eternity when um, it was mm -hmm. created. So Moses wrote this, but Dr. Kinley saw it. So we see that how in this vision, he saw Moses um, in detail, how when he went up here in this mountain, he was uh, taken up there for 40 days on this second trip, and he saw. Yahweh Elohim, matter of fact, 74 people saw him on that day. They saw him in this super incorporal form, Elohim, the archetype, original pattern of the universe. But when they saw him, he really just uh, transmuted from this super incorporal state into this threefold intangible tabernacle, then back to himself. So he saw that everything that came out of the supercorporal body, this Holy Ghost man who just made everything. So Moses was seeing this, but Moses was writing about it. He didn't draw pictures of it, but the super thing is that Dr. Kennedy saw what Moses saw. He mm -hmm. saw what John saw in the Isle of Patmos, and then he wrote about it. So in other words, he was up here. This is the first a, a trip that he was given the instruction on how to build his tabernacle. So on this first trip, so um, I'm just setting up a foundation on how Moses and John both were confirming one another what they were seeing. And John the Revelator, he saw from the end to the beginning. And you notice like this tabernacle here is uh, shown open, but when John saw it, it was closed, in other words, as it says in one of the scriptures, clothed in the sun. And uh, on the Isle of Patmos, you see that first image he saw like, and that's in Revelation where you saw in him in this shape and form, says hair was like wool, all of that, feet like brass, but he was seeing the image of the tabernacle, which he himself is a tabernacle. So going into 
this teaching and going back to the law, um, get a get go back to Ephesians, yeah, you know, where I did Ephesians three and one. That's Ephesians three and one. Mm -hmm. For this cause, I saw the prisoner of Yahshua, the Messiah. Now I'm jumping ahead of myself and hopefully there are not uh, any new people in here where they couldn't catch up to where I am, but this is all where um, first the children of Israel um, get the chart that shows um, the law and then fulfillment um, Jeremiah, we use for Jeremiah 31, 31, show all those art, law and the ordinances and then on the right side. Uh, yeah, okay. So here, just catching up with this is that uh, as the scripture lesson said that the Jews were grafted in AD 33 and the previous speaker say that Seven years later, the Gentiles were grafted in by faith. They just had to believe on Yahweh, and that was their salvation. And uh, since they believed on him, it was accounted, since Abraham believed in the promise, it was accounted to him for righteousness. So those that have the faith, that's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So we went from the law given, and it was impossible to keep. So Yahshua Messiah, he came in and fulfilled all the things that were written in the Old Testament or in the law and in the prophets because the whole book concerned him. He came in the volume of the book. That's Psalms 40 and 5 and Hebrews 10 and 5. Mm -hmm. Lord, I come in the volume of the book to do thy will, O Yahweh. Mm -hmm. So his will was to, to move these first things out of the way that they couldn't keep. So they were given these cardinal ordinances um, as a law. And that wasn't given to Gentiles. That's why I wanted to just separate it. So just get Jeremiah 31, 31 real quick before you get um, the other scripture in uh, Ephesians. Behold, the days come, say Yahweh, I'm going to make a new covenant. So that's what he's talking about right here. That's Jeremiah 31 and 31. Mm -hmm. Behold, the days come, says Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Now, see, that was the Jews and them only. Um, for those that don't know this for certain, we Gentiles never had to do any of the things that the Jews had baptism, Lord's suppers, and they got it everlasting suppers, tithing, foot washing. They can do all kinds of stuff now trying to do a better job than they sweet Jesus did. So all of this was only intended for Jews, all those 613 ordinances, 10 commandments, 603 ordinances. So um, Yahshua Messiah come in to move those out of the way. And so just keep reading that scripture to show you that he moved those things out of the way. Mm -hmm. Read. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers. See, they had this whole covenant or this whole law. Read. In the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. So they was in that previous chart, they were brought all the way from Egypt out in the wilderness of Sinai. So when he gave them that law on that previous chart where Moses was up there in the mountain. He gave him that tabernacle and uh, he gave him the 10 commandments then, but they couldn't keep that law. Just keep reading. Mm -hmm. Which my covenant they break. Which my laws they break. <laughs> right. Although I wasn't husband unto them. Although he was a husband, married them up in that mountain. And they all say, everything you say I will do. So they, that was that marriage they took, but they defiled themselves by building that golden calf. That was a first break away from what they had seen, seeing the Red Sea be divided. They went through on dry ground. 
Uh, they had food for 40 years uh, while he was out here in this wilderness. And all of them that was out here that came out of Egypt, uh, all of them died off except for three. And then the new birth was which went over into the promised land. In other words, because they were disobedient and broke the covenants and just continued to sin out here. And that's why they, and they died because of unbelief. Uh, 12 spies were sent over when they first got up here and they didn't believe what Caleb and, and Joshua told them. Those were the two with a righteous report. The 10 others that went across of those 12 spies, they say, no, the land is really, really nice, but the people are too big. They like giants. We look like grasshoppers and all that. Mm -hmm. So they were afraid. And then they wanted to stone uh, Caleb and Joshua for bringing back the truth. That's just the way it is now. They want to stone you for telling the truth. You tell a lie, you in, in today's time, that old boy is running this world. He's doing a fine job with the world full of lies and deceit and just, just bringing it up to the date. But uh, keep reading where you're at. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said now, the other. After those days, now after those days he's speaking about is after the days of of Yahshua's life, death, burial, resurrection, and then put his spirit into man. In other words, they couldn't keep that law because everybody that wrote those books and the law and the prophet, they had the Holy Spirit when they were writing, but when the Holy Spirit left them, they didn't have the Holy Spirit. So when Yahshua poured out his spirit on the day of Pentecost. All those that were dead slept, they arose and were resurrected out of the graves because they didn't have the Holy Spirit. They just, the spirit was of Yahweh was long to them. But the Holy Spirit, nobody, angels or nobody didn't have the Holy Spirit until the day of Pentecost. That's when the Holy Spirit was put in the heart and mind of men and also the angelic host. But then seven years later, that's where we want to go you can just skip where you are and go over to Ephesians and uh, pick up how Gentiles, Paul is writing about how, what his mission was because everything in this, that we read and see on these charts and these transcripts, everything is about Yahshua the Messiah from one, in one way or another. In other words, in one dimension or another, it's all about his story right. of salvation. But read there what Paul was talking about when he, uh, the scripture lesson was beautiful, but it, when he continued on um, to talk about, Jen put more emphasis on Gentiles. Read. Um, Gen, um, sorry, Ephesians 3 and 1. Mm -hmm. For this cause I saw the prisoner of Yahshua the Messiah. Now he became a prisoner because he was used to persecute the Jews. Mm -hmm. He was at Stephen's stone, stone and he oiled his coat while they were stoning him. Mm -hmm. but, uh, he was resurrected when the Holy Spirit knocked him off his, uh, whatever he was traveling on, mule, donkey, a horse, on his way to Damascus to continue to persecute uh, the assembly of Yahshua. Um, he was then called by Yahshua, and he called by name, say, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? And um, he was blind for three days and went into town and um, he was then had the Holy Spirit. So even those that was he was persecuting were afraid of him to see him around and say, wow, this is the one going all the way back to Stephen Stoning. And uh, that's a beautiful chapter, the seventh chapter of Acts, where you go into detail all the things that Stephen testified mm -hmm. going back to Abraham. It's just like Yahshua the son of Nun did when he got up to a type of heaven in Canaan land. And, said he was the one that brought him all the way from back from the beginning. And this same Yahshua, he has the power, as the previous speaker said, to lay down his life and pick it up again. So he's just moving at the speed of light, 186,000 miles per second. That's how fast Yahshua was moving, fulfilling everything to a jot and tittle. Now go to Ephesians 3 and 1, and I'll be, uh, one other scripture, I'll be finished. Ephesians 3 and 1. For this cause I saw the prisoner of Yahshua the Messiah for you Gentiles. If now, he see this, hear this. 
mm -hmm. a prisoner for you Gentiles. So most Christian and Christian, all of Christian, well, but majority of Christian, they don't have a clue of the meaning of this scripture. Read. I'm Keep sorry. reading. Mm -hmm. If he have heard of the dispensation of the grace of Elohim. Which so he's talking about grace and say the Gentiles are saved by faith through grace. Oh, is this grace is, a, is one of Yahweh's um, attributes. Mercy is one of his attributes. So he had mercy and grace on us that have faith. And the only way you have faith Faith come by hearing and seeing. So we see this vision. We hear the people that are speaking and talking about the things that happened thousands of years ago, bringing it all the way up into Dr. Kenley's mission as far as what he brought in revealing the truth versus the lies that were in the world and went to uh, all, just about all parts of the world with this vision or with this teaching and people a few of them believe, and a lot of them didn't. So that's where we are today. A, a few people believing in the truth, and a lot of people believing in a lie in the whole world and in within this uh, class. Keep reading there. I want to get up to about 10 in that. Uh... Okay. Mm -hmm. Second verse. If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of Yahweh, which is given to me, which is given me to you, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in a few times. I now mean, you see where he ta always talked about how this was a mystery, even a mystery which has been hidden, but we had to be chosen to even be sitting up here right now before the foundation of the world to know these things for certain. So he just had mercy on us to give us this great mystery, mm -hmm. the teaching of the truth of salvation. And um, this mystery, uh, mystery of righteousness, mystery of iniquity, all oh, that mystery of iniquity, that boy is really running rapid right now. Mm -hmm. We want to be thankful that uh, he's given us a true inheritance to know, in other words, is John the 17th chapter, third verse eight. It just slipped me, but read that real quick for me, uh, someone. Mm -hmm. That they might know thee. This, when he say this, he's talking about himself. This is life eternal. That they might know that thou art the only true Elohim and you me, Yahshua the Messiah. That's eternal life to know that secret that the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, these three are one, and not like two billion Catholics believe it. They have to swear by the Trinity. Otherwise, that's part of their doctrine in the catechism that they believe and to be a Catholic since 325, so called AD, they believed in a Trinity that the Nicene uh, Council held in 325, called by Emperor Constantine for the uh, people that monotheism and uh, polytheism was at war with all those bishops from around the world, particularly the Middle East. But what we see now coming into this class is that Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua, these three are one, a unity and not a trinity. Like, again, can you imagine all of them believing in a trinity and all of them believe that the Pope is the God of this world. In other words, that's what you have to believe to be a Catholic. So they got that all wrong. But we know now coming down here that Yahweh Elohim, in other words, he's that super incorporal Holy Ghost man that went from pure spirit and he was seen in visions and revelations by all those that wrote him from Moses to Malachi. And then he came in in the flesh to do the will of the Father. So it's so much history about Yahshua Messiah. We just can't overlook him. And just keep reading that just up to about the 10th verse and I'll be done. How that by revelation, he made known unto me the mystery, 
Now okay. that's a mystery. Now you got to know what a mystery is. We we not only study them, but we see them, and they're being revealed. Mm -hmm. When mysteries revealed, you say, "Wow, mm -hmm. I see that." In other words, you see it in your mind and your heart, and you can register it. It's a big difference between black and white, on and off, either or, right or wrong. Mm -hmm. And that's how we are. We are, have to be on the righteous instead of the unrighteous path. And that's because Yahshua Messiah has given us something. And just like he's told us that we know we are Yahweh in the whole world, blind and wicked. We know he's coming, giving us understanding. We're in him. He in, in us and us in him. Um, jump over to Acts 17, 28 and read to the end and I'll be finished. And all those that didn't, at, where they didn't read that in Ephesians, since we all, there may be a few Jews by nature, but we're all Gentiles and we're grafted in by faith. And that's what Paul is spelling out how we are grafted in because he was grafted in even himself by faith, although he was a Pharisee, well learned in all the law and the prophets, but he had to come that way with a savior. And like all of us have to have the same savior. There's not many saviors, but just one savior, one universe, one creation. But get to Acts 17, 28, and I'll be finished. That's Acts 17, 28. Mm -hmm. For in him we live. And see, that's why we live. Everything that you can see and can't see is, is within spirit, just like this chart showing us. All everything within that yellow or that cloud, orange cloud around that chart, we're in the same manner. We're within this creation or his creation. Mm -hmm. Read. For in him we live and move and have our being. That's why we exist, because he's just spirit and you know, materialized. Read. Mm -hmm. As some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. And we're his offspring. We even breathe in his, his name. <sighs> Everybody that have breath breathe in his name. Can't help it. Read. For as much then as we are the offspring of Yahweh, we ought not to think that gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device can be like the Most High. None of that stuff, none of that stuff can compare. In other words, all those rich, I don't just look last night at the 25 uh, richest black people in the United States. Some of them are billionaires. But that ain't gonna do them not one iota of grace, but can't be their savior. Mm -hmm. In other words, none of that stuff they have that you can buy with money and gold and all the stuff that is being spelled out there, you can't do nothing with it on the other side. Mm -hmm. Nothing can happen. You gotta have Yahshua in your heart and mind. That's what's gonna save your soul. Mm -hmm. Read. And the times of this ignorance, Yahweh winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Repent. You got to look at things the right way. Mm -hmm. Nothing crooked is going to make it into the next age. Read. Because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world by righteousness. That's by what he's going to judge, just like that chart show that unrighteous spirit and the righteous, he's going to judge the world, the whole world. Mm -hmm. By that man whom he hath ordained. And that's Yahshua the Messiah, our Savior. Mm -hmm. Whereof he hath given proof unto all men in that he hath raised him from the dead. And when they heard of the resurrection... Go ahead. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, and others said, we will hear thee again on this matter. So Saul departed from them, from among them. And we keep okay, going. So that's, that's good enough. Because uh, Paul, again, you see how his whole life was turned around. And then he was eventually crucified for telling the truth. And he said that uh, his life was dedicated to preaching the gospel. That is, that Yahshua died, buried, resurrected poured out his spirit as promised all the way back to Abraham. And that's the tr true mystery that people can't see in the world today. And I'm so thankful that I see it and that Yahshua saved me from myself. Mm -hmm. Those words, I'd like to thank you for the time.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, Dr. Ewell. And for our next speaker, it is a pleasure to call on from the Southfield class, Dr. Sean Wright. Uh, I don't know, he may be at work. Dr. Sean Wright, are you able to unmute? We'll give you a few more seconds. I'm here. I'm here. Sorry about that. No, go ahead. Good evening. How are you guys doing this evening? Good evening. Good evening. It's a, it's a pleasure to be um, here and able to give a testimony um, to my Savior and my Father, Yahweh, uh, Yahshua the Messiah. Um, I appreciate it. The, and I enjoyed the words of the previous speaker. Um, and the vessels that uh, he spoke through, um, because it is one speaker, and that's Joshua. Uh, and I was relaying that um, to someone today at work. Uh, and I put it in this respect. I said, I said, the universe is always speaking. Are we willing? and aware and conscious of when, when that voice is talking to us. Mm. And I tell you, it's, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a pleasure and it's a, uh, it's an honor to be able to hear that voice. When you can be still and be quiet and be able to hear and be directed. Cause that's what I look for is my savior to direct me. Uh, I know this, and if you could please get John uh, the 15th chapter and 16. That is John 15 and 16. Uh, yeah. All right, John 15, 16. You have not chosen me. But I have chosen you and ordained you mm -hmm. that you should go and bring forth fruit. I'm sorry. And that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. He may give it you. Okay. These things I command you, that ye love one another. If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. Okay, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Dr. Lewis. That one was good as well. I, I believe I was looking for another uh, scripture. Um, Joshua is still speaking, but he's saying without me. You can do nothing? You can do no thing. That's right. That is uh, John 15 and 5. Uh, I, mean, I can start at 1 if you want to. Uh, yeah, that'll be good. Thank you. Right. John 15 and 1. I am the vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And right. every branch that beareth, beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Okay, uh, pause um, for one moment. I, I also want you to pick up uh, Galatians, because um, it brought out something else that um, another brother in heart we're, we're just talking about today, and that's the fruit. Um, so could you... Hold that and get Galatians, uh, the fifth chapter. Galatians five and one. Uh, yeah. Or or, or you you can jump down to where uh, where Paul is talking about uh, the fruits of the spirit. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Dorian. That's the sixth chapter. Sixth chapter is the fruits of the spirit, right? Okay. Uh, I don't. I'm not. I have to read it. Oh no, no. That's fifth chapter. That's the uh, fifth chapter. All right. Oh. That's uh, Galatians 5 and 22. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no penalty. Excellent. Okay, so uh, Paul is saying that he's describing these fruits, right? And there is how many? The fruit of the spirit is love, one, joy, two, peace, three long-suffering four gentleness five 
goodness, six. Faith, seven. Meekness, eight. Temperance is nine. Now, is that a coincidence or not? Mm -hmm. There's coincidences. And none of these, none of these verses or or you know what I'm saying? When when you see these numbers line up the way they do, uh, it's no coincidence. And we know that there are uh, nine divine attributes, uh, nine vessels in the, the temple, in the mm -hmm. tavern. Uh, you know, so it's, it's a pattern in play here. Um, so go back to John 15 and pick up uh, where you left off at, please. That's John. I'll just start at one again. Uh, okay. John 15 and one. I am the vine and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. So if, if you're branch not, that, oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. I'm, we're interrupting. So if you're not bearing those things that Paul was referring to, Yahshua here is saying that every branch that bears not fruit, he does what? He takes it away. Now, what, what about the branch that beareth the fruit? And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Purge. Now, my wife and I, we, we plant flowers for the last two seasons. You know, and some of those annuals that we plant, they got to be purged in order for you to get some more uh, blooms. You know, some of those flowers require you to, if you're going to see more blooms, you got to purge some of that stuff that has withered. Mm. You know, so you can get for some more fruit or some more flower. Uh, continue on, Dr. Lewis. Now, ye, now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. Mm -hmm. I am the vine, ye are the branches. Not, that's not, we're not speaking. This is Joshua, right? Mm -hmm. Joshua said, he is the vine. Mm -hmm. We are the branches. It's like uh, it's like a family tree, you know, where you have the roots, are the uh, you know the, the grandparents and great grandparents, and then you mm -hmm. go up the tree and you got the trunk, maybe the the, the matriarchs or uh, uh, other the grandparents or the or the uh, great grandparents, and, you know, the, or their children, and then you go up further in the tree and you got the branches and the leaves, you understand, and so branches be like the offspring if you would mm -hmm. and the branches are where the fruit is born or where it hangs at go ahead continue Dr. Mm -hmm. that's the fifth verse i am the vine ye are the branches he that abideth in me and i in him the same bringeth forth much fruit for without me ye can do nothing wow so if, if we're a part of that that family tree right and that that family is has how many names? It's got like four or five different names. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Nope. Mm -hmm. Somebody's paying attention and somebody knows. It's only one name. Mm -hmm. Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua, and the entire earth was created by Yahshua. And there's a transcript that Dr. Kinley talks about that a creation by Yahshua. Mm -hmm. but he said there at the end for without me you can do some things on your own and the small things you can take care of um, the rest of the everything you know the, the heavier lifts got to be done by by the father you know what I'm saying nope no he said without me you can do and I, I remember how Dr. Joseph Martin used to say it no thing mm -hmm. no thing at all you can do without him it doesn't make a difference if you're talking uh, physically, you know what I mean, or spiritually trying to gain or understand it. You know what I'm saying? You can't do anything without it. You can't, and I've attested to I can attest to this. You can't even study on your own. All right. That's a requirement is for you to study, to show yourself approved to, the, to everybody else. 
and correct. This study that you yourself approved under Yahweh. But now Yahweh is in us all, though. Mm -hmm. So we shouldn't be thinking about being approved by the vessel next to us or that's looking at us, but recognize and be conscious of who's abiding in that vessel. And that's why the, the other thing comes to mind about uh, uh, making, making what is this, how does it go? Making your, commending yourself to every man's conscience. Could you pick that up for me? Uh, I gotta find that one. Anybody know where it's at? I'll just call it out. Okay. Sorry, I'm looking it up now. Nope, that's okay. That's good. What was the scripture again? I'm sorry. Commending yourself to every man's conscience. Okay, let me see if I can find it. Uh, okay, Second Corinthians four two. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. All right, Second Corinthians four and two. I'll start at one. Second Corinthians four and one. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of Yahweh deceitfully, mm -hmm. but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of Elohim. Now, going back to the second verse, um, and I believe this is Paul as well, writing to the Jews in Corinth, mm -hmm. saying that, we faint not as we have received this ministry, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. If you've renounced something, re on the beginning of that means you have done it and you've done it once before or, or more than once. Or that you've done that before. So you, you've done some dishonest things, but now you have renounced them. So you done a 180 or you turn away from walking on that path of dishonesty yeah. or speaking dishonestly and speaking things that are not true the messiah is coming that's not true that's what the key is called that's a cap that's <laughs> <laughs> it took a minute for me to catch that <laughs> <laughs> You capping on that, boss. You lying. You're lying about that. See, that's a lie. The Messiah is come. Mm -hmm. We can we can pick that up as well too in First John, uh, the fourth chapter. Mm -hmm. But he says that now you you you've been walking this way, but now since you have this ministry, it's a requirement that you have you have to renounce those hidden things of dishonesty. Not walking in craftiness, using uh, you using uh, false names and false doctrine, preaching false doctrine, handling the word of Yahweh deceitfully. But now we require, and oh, and if you could pick that up, because John John talks about that what Yahweh did for us. First John, what you was talking about. Yes, uh, the fourth chapter, even in our ignorance, what Yahweh did for us. All right. That's first down, four and one. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, is, is that the, is that the uh, verse where he says uh, Yahweh winked at our ignorance? No, that's that's no. Paul. Again. I'm sorry. That's uh, 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 oh man, um, Romans. <laughs> that's Romans. X. That's an X. X to, uh, 20. Uh, Acts 17 and um, 30. Uh, yeah, Acts 17 and 30. Okay, thank you, Dr. Lewis. Mm -hmm. At the times of this ignorance, you want me to go up a little bit? Uh, yeah, just to catch the train of thought, uh, please. Okay, Acts 17, 28. For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of Yahweh, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver 
or stone graven by art and man's device. And those are all tangible things, right? Mm -hmm. Now we have come into a knowledge by way of this divine vision and revelation. Yahweh has unlocked our understanding and showed us that there is a, a intangible sanctuary and that we have to worship him intangibly, if you would, or, or non-physically so. Mm -hmm. Because that intangible tabernacle or sanctuary is not physical, it's that is spiritual, can't be seen with the physical eye. Uh, continue on, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. In the times of this ignorance, Yahweh winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. That conjunction means that there must be a change. But now, at the times of our ignorance, and there's nothing wrong with being ignorant, the problem comes in is where we're willfully ignorant. When you have been shown the truth and you go against it knowingly and willingly so. But now Yahweh requires us, after being made conscious of what the truth is, he requires us. What, what was that again, Dr. Lewis? In the times of this ignorance, Yahweh winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness, by that man whom, whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given proof unto all men, and that he hath raised him from the dead. And that man that hath been ordained, that is none other than Yahshua the Messiah. Nobody else was found qualified. John was shown that. He, he was shown that in, in, in uh, the book of Revelation. Um, in heaven, and in earth and under the earth, no one was found. Only the, the son of Yahweh, that that lamb without spot or blemish, Yahshua the Messiah, he was the only one qualified to be able to resurrect us up out of our state of mind we were in. There is one more, um, scripture I wanted to get and I believe it's in Psalms it's, uh, David is talking about I still had um, I think the 15th chapter of John Dr. Lewis mm -hmm. uh, we compl did we complete that all of that one uh, a little more to it um uh, that's okay. I, I think you, you I think we got the just yeah, it was we got the part you wanted, but uh you can do nothing without me. Right. In in Psalms, uh David talks about he it was a prayer he was asking for Yahweh to take away those hidden, those hidden thoughts, those secret oh, man, cleanse me of my secret thoughts. That is give me a second. Go ahead. Well, I'm looking with you. <laughs> uh, it is in uh, Psalms or Proverbs, it might be. Okay. Uh, Psalms 19 and 12. All right, let's try that. Psalms 19 and 12. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Mm -hmm. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Yahweh, my rock and my redeemer. Mm -hmm. Let's end that. Okay. Thank you. That's uh, That was going back, um, coinciding with uh, uh, the scripture over in uh, uh, Corinthians, where he's talking about uh, turning away from those 
deceitful, those uh, 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 renounce from those works. Mm -hmm. uh, so that that's the prayer that I'm 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 having lately. You know, Yahweh take care of those things that I don't even know about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and especially those things that I do know are there, please, you know, get rid of that. Mm -hmm. People want to be found when, when the master cometh. You see that that parable that Yahshua talked about. When the master cometh, see he he wants a return on his investment. You don't want to be the one that went buried his his talent. We want it to be multiplied when he comes or when or when we are found to have the thing revealed in us and universally. So we want to be found. To be ready, like we'll see it on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Not preparing, but that, that was another uh, another thing that was touched on. But I, I'll let I'll let somebody else run with it. Was uh those those five with oil and five without oil that was mm. the oil representing spirit and those that were without they were found when the when when the when the groomsmen came and and and, and called the the guest in to the party you know to the marriage party Mm -hmm. Those didn't have any oil in their lamp, they couldn't enter. Mm -hmm. So when Yahshua will be revealed, you know, we want to be found with the same mind and the same spirit. With that, I thank you for the opportunity and I'll say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, Dr. Wright. And for our next speaker. We will have, I'm sorry, we will have Dr. Philip Crook from our Saginaw branch. Okay, good evening, class. Good evening. It's always a pleasure to give a testimony of our creator and savior and our brother and Yahshua the Messiah. Truly enjoyed the words of the previous speakers. And it was quite edible in what they were saying. I like that Dr. Mary Taylor was talking about the zeal that everyone has. Can you get that scripture for me? It's Romans. Romans 10 and 1. Brethren. My heart's desire and prayer to Yahweh for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of Yahweh, but not according to knowledge. See, now that zeal, you know, that might sound like it's something good. But as you finish reading it, you know, because as you finish reading it, it say, but not according to the knowledge. Not according to the knowledge of what? Of Yahweh and his purpose and his pattern and his plan. So that means they come up with their own concept and opinion and thoughts of how they should go about worshiping him. And at this time, you know, a lot of times they didn't really have no understanding of him, period, especially from a spiritual standpoint, you know, because that zeal is to have, you know, you enthusiasm, you know, you, got, you, you have desires to uh, learn of the creator, but it's according to how, how you feel. Right. And, that's, <laughs> and that's wrong, you know, when you start getting up into what the previous speaker was saying, getting the understanding with um, the five with oil and the five without oil, you know what I'm saying? It's just like saying those, there's going to be those who have the Holy Spirit in them and there's those who don't have the Holy Spirit in them. You know, everyone dwells, everything that goes on, it goes on within Yahweh, but everybody doesn't have Yahshua within them. You know, Yahshua ain't jumping in and out of your body. Once he get in there, he stand. He might, he might have you to um, learn 
at a fast pace or at a slow pace, but once he get inside of you, he's not leaving. He don't make no mistakes. You know, he don't just get in, oh, I messed up getting into this person. This person ain't right. Like, he didn't know who you was. He the one who created you. You see what I'm saying? He knew who you are. He know his, you know, he know his sons. So I thought that was something, you know, you know, somebody might think to have a zeal. Well, I do have a zeal. Well, that ain't saying nothing much. Hmm. You have a knowledge and understanding of your creator. We need to have a knowledge and understanding of our creator. And we got to come through Yahshua. Although these three are one, it's a pattern. It's, he has a system set up and that we got to come unto him, and this, especially in this day and time. And that's through Yahshua. He is the door. If you ain't coming through Yahshua, Yahweh ain't even paying attention to you. Mm. He ain't even paying attention to you. He ain't nothing you can say, well, you know, God... Please help me, Christ, Jesus, Buddha, Allah, or whoever you are. You know, just help me. Help me this one time. And there's always something you're praying about for some kind of, nothing spiritual. You know, so you got to know, you got to have a knowledge and understanding of Yahshua and righteousness. And you got to worship him in spirit and truth, not from a carnal standpoint. Got to get away from your own concept and opinion, throw those away, you know, get Exodus 3 and 3, because look what Moses had to do when he he came unto Yahweh, when Yahweh was finna introduce him, his name, look what Moses had to do. That's Exodus 3 and 3. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Now, Why does not burn. Yeah. See, now Moses, he done fled, if you know the story of Moses having to flee Egypt and why he fled Egypt. Now he's out there in the wilderness of Sinai, by the Mount Sinai, Mount Bushy, which means Mount Bushy. Mount Bushy, Mount Sinai was a mountain of bushes. And um, we see this bush being on fire. And it's not being consumed. Now to him, that's some, hey, that's all uh, because from what I know, what I've been taught, and what I've seen, if a bush on fire, it's going to be consumed. But this bush is not being consumed. Because for one, Moses was having a vision. He was having a divine vision. And it wasn't nothing that if you were standing out there, you would have seen. And Yahweh would have had it where you wouldn't even been paying attention to uh, Moses if you were out there. You know, he was having a divine vision, but he had to turn away from all his thoughts, all his carnal minded. That's what we got to take out of from his carnal way of thinking that this supposed to be consumed. No, you are having a divine vision and you got to turn aside those carnal ways. Because when you come to Yahweh, you got to come with an open mind, an open heart, and it's got to be spiritual. It's got to be spiritual. It's, it's the only way you're going to get an understanding of it. It's got to be, and he got to be the one that give you that through Yahshua the Messiah, our Savior. So I thought listening to her with that, have that zeal, you know, don't take that zeal as something good. You know, the zeal just means you have a desire, but from what? This ain't not according to the truth. And that she said the gospel has to be preached to you, and it's going to be preached to you by Dr. Philip Crook. No. John 14, 26. We're going to get some scripture back and let you know who's doing the teaching. Yeah. That is John 14, 26. <laughs> Excuse me. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever uh I have said unto you. Now, this is Joshua talking. Hmm. You know, and this takes me into Dr. Ed, the president. And you all, how could he remember all these things? How could he have see eternity and everything from eternity to eternity and see everything in between it? Well, John 14, 26 lets you know that Joshua said, 
whatever he has shown you, whatever he has told you, he's going to bring back to your remembrance. So if he's showing you anything, you might forget. And the reason why you forget is because it ain't you who's doing anything. But if you're doing your study, they say study to show thyself approve of Yahweh. If you're taking down your notes, writing them down, checking it out, doing your research sincerely and learning of him and coming to class regularly, you know, although you forget once you get to talking, you know, once Yahshua get to working inside of you, he bring back to your remembrance the things you need to say or what he want to have you to say. But it ain't you who's saying it. It's Joshua who's saying it. He gets all the credit and all the glory. That's how they're able to remember. You know, mm -hmm. if we left it up to Dr. Kinley, as you know, it had been a whole, like when Moses first came down from the mount, you know, from that second that second trip to the mount, but his first time up, when he came, he left a lot of things out. That's why you have Genesis 1 and Genesis 2. Mm -hmm. Genesis 2, and you don't have to get it. Genesis 2 ain't nothing but extension of Genesis 1 of some of the things that should have been said. Because Moses left out in Genesis 1, he left out the name. He forgot to tell him the name was Yahweh. You know, he left out the name and he left out some other things. But Yahweh had to bring back to his members. Because if he leave it up to us, we're going to mess it up. But he ain't leaving it up to us. And he is showing us that if he left it up to us like he did with the children of Israel, we will mess it up there. We'll do exactly the same thing they doing. We'll be somewhere preaching Yahweh at the Greater Baptist Church somewhere. Right. But thank y'all. Thank all the glory goes to Yahweh through Yahshua the Messiah that he didn't do that. And he has blessed us to know that he is the one that's doing the teaching and doing the talking. I pre I really enjoyed that, you know, mm -hmm. understanding the fruits of the spirit. Yahshua is divine. We just the branches. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He 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 multiplying us. So when they say that fruit's gonna be multiplied and it's gonna be purged, you know, once you come into this gospel, you just multiply. And that's what he always told them to be fruitful and multiply, but it was from a spiritual standpoint or from the mm -hmm. transgression of Adam and Eve, we had that kind of mind, you know, man had that kind of mind where they couldn't worship him spirit, but it was always meant for you to worship him spirit, but Yahweh being spirit and it's all in all, he's just too much for us with a kind of mind to comprehend. So he had to break things down, had to slow things down. And he had to give us a natural understanding, a type and shadow of some spiritual reality. And that's why we get it to give Romans 1, 19 and 20. That's Romans 1 and 19. Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. For Yahweh hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and supernal nature, so they so that they are without excuse. Yeah, we are without excuse because the, from the creation of the world, we are patterning after Yahweh. Now you got his supernal nature. We must know what that supernal nature is. And that's Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua the Messiah. The world call it the Godhead, you know, but it's rightfully says it's his supernal nature. And to understand the supernal nature, he had to materialize, he had to get matter. And what does matter consist of? You know, a bunch of atoms, you know, and the atom consists of a proton, electron, and a neutron, electron going around and about. And I understand y'all had that um, thing with the um, cover. Did y'all ever go over that? Yeah, we did last week. Did y'all get the understanding of what that so-called star David was? I think so. I don't know if somebody else came up with something else. We'll find out next week. Okay, you We did. That. It was good. Yeah. Can you get the um, Elohim book? We'll just go over it real quick. 
Okay, give me a second. I got it, Juan. Just uh, hold on one second. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not doing the charts today. Brother Duan is taking his inaugural turn. Let me pull it up real quick. Because uh, right. we, we heard about you just want it. The, you just want the cover or you want? Yeah, the, the cover with the Elohim and then the tabernacle pattern. And okay. you got the Adam on top of El Elohim. Right. Okay. Just give me one second. I'm sorry. And where you go into is the old and new covenant. And it, okay. in the transcript, Dr. Kinley just let you know that so-called star David doesn't mean anything, but it symbolized that you are a spiritual Jew. Mm. You know, and really when you look at that Adam, and that Adam, once again, Yahweh taking on shape and form as Elohim, that's matter materialized. Spirit materialized, you know, is that matter coming in with them atoms right there on, to our left, but it's actually on the right. That's the atom. So man is made in that image. Mm -hmm. So what you have. Sorry. All right. Sorry about that. Go so ahead. what you have right there now, see, you got that star, you got the tabernacle pattern because everything goes according to the pattern. So looking at the triangles right there's really two triangles one pointing up and one point down and they say if you was to take that zero take that circle and cut off the point going in one direction and take it coming back the other one all you have is this atom if you take that point point off but this the them points represent the flesh Yahweh coming down from heaven unto mankind. So you got the three, and they got three points representing the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. Three in heaven, and the, let's get Ephesians 4 to get an understanding. And then you got the, the three in heaven point down. Get Ephesians the four, four, where it said, how could it be that he that ascended is the one that descended? Mm -hmm. That's Ephesians 4 and 9. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? Yeah, and that's 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 pretty much it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's 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 Yahweh, the one who ascended. He first had to descend. You know, he first had to have that Exodus. You know, before the Genesis, before you can get that rebirth, he had to come on down from and from us for us to get a understanding of him once he made this creation he came on down first mm -hmm. and then he was right here with us all the time you know he wasn't nobody else down here doing anything he's been doing it and for you to have a knowledge and understanding of this so when you see that star david which really is two triangles one point up and one point down within each other you see what i'm saying you can't separate it you know what I'm saying? But when you look at look at it, it look like a star and everything, you know, it's just really saying Yahweh Elohim and coming on down into his creation, manifesting himself into us. Where we got to look for him, where we got to find him, where is that new covenant? Je um, Dr. Who said it was John Jeremiah 31, 31 that let you know the new covenant, the true new covenant is written in your heart, written Written, written in your mind, you know, it's right inside of you. That's where you got to find Yahshua. You ain't got to go search, go out to a mountain. You ain't got to go sail on your boat at nighttime, look up at the stars, none of that. Mm -hmm. Or go in your basement, you know, meet up at some so-called temple. You know, where you got to find him at is right within inside of you because that's where he's dwelling. Those are the temples he's dwelling between us. Mm -hmm. uh, and this so-called star, so-called star David, which the children, well, it wasn't even, David didn't even come up with this star. When you do your research, you find out that the so-called about five, 600 years, when they wanted these so-called Jews, these physical Jews, natural Jews, seeing that everybody else had an emblem of Christianity, had a cross, they needed them an emblem. But Dr. Kelly in his transcript said that that's, Star, that so called star David only means one thing, and that you are a spiritual Jew. You have an understanding of Yahshua, 
Yahweh Elohim and Yahshua in righteous and in spirit and in truth. And that was something, you know, you keep coming to this class, there's a whole lot you're going to learn. You're going, and he made it simple, you know. I probably it took us probably by hours of studying and asking them when we got the answer, the answer was simple. Mm. <laughs> You know, because somebody knows, like you say, you had to call off one person had to call off another brother. We looking and we looking and we read and we getting an understanding, but we trying to get an understanding according to Dr. Kelly. Why would this be put on the Elohim book? Mm -hmm. And you got to go to them transcripts. Mm -hmm. And somewhere in them transcripts, Dr. Kelly didn't cover everything. And those within those transcripts, he didn't cover everything. Mm. Hey, until you get on it, you don't know. They say, "Oh, I say I read about that Star David, and I think it's called the Old and New Covenant." Okay. You know when you're reading and you're reading down somewhere, and they tell you, "Yeah, you got that Star David." You know, and he just when he said what it is, it just mean you was a spiritual Jew, and he kept going on. Cause everybody mm -hmm. need to have him. <laughs> he didn't. He didn't take a whole lot of time on it either. You know, because David didn't even come up with that Star. So those are some things, you know, I'm always glad to give a testimony, you know, of Yahweh, Yahshua, what he has shown me, he's shown me a lot today, and I appreciate, you know, being able to give that testimony, and if you got anything out of it, give all the glory to our Savior, our brother, Yahshua the Messiah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Crook. You said that, uh, yep, okay. That transcript is Old Covenant, New Covenant. I just looked it yeah. up. So. Yeah. You read down there, it tells you they don't spend a whole bunch of time. Everybody got this and this and that. That Star David, did he get to the Star David? And he just say, I'm going to tell you, and he tell you what it is. It's mm -hmm. just your spiritual journey. Keep going on. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, well, thank you for that, Dr. Crook. And I think you guys covered that in Saginaw Sunday, right? The cover? Yeah. Yeah, because um, Chef Carl, Dr. Carl, had asked us, you know, did we know when we got back Wednesday, he asked us mm -hmm. about it, and then Sunday we went over it. Okay. So for those of you to get Clovis's emails, uh, he, I think he just sent it out yesterday. So you can watch that if you want more information. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Crook. And uh, Wine, you can take it back over. Oh, I'm sorry. I got to stop sharing. Hold on one second. All right, go ahead, Juan. All right. Uh, thank you again, Dr. Crook. And for our next speaker, it's a pleasure to call on from our Lansing branch, Dr. Sonia Roberts. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, I've enjoyed the previous speakers and um, it's great to join you all. I'm sorry, I'm nervous. So I'm going to try to work through that. Um, so let's go ahead. Let's go back um, to our scripture lesson and let's start it from the beginning um, so that we can just close out uh, revisiting all of the points that the previous speakers have brought out. That is Ephesians 2 and 1. Yes, please. All right. Ephesians 2 and 1. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Mm -hmm. So one second, so that we won't lose that thought. So he says, and you hath he quickened, right? And so when we're talking about this quickening, we're talking about uh, being made alive, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we're talking about this light and what is, uh, we don't have to get this right now because that's like, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot to unpack. Um, but in the transcript faith, he talks about understanding um, what faith is. And, and essentially he talks about the fact that the Holy Spirit in you is what is uh, giving you um, this 
desire to know and is revealing to you and uh, so that it's a part of this quickening that is occurring within us right and so i'm going to talk about that a little bit more um so what i'll say actually there's an email that i want to go to so let me go ahead and um so rhonda sent out it email on June 10th that was one of the Dr. Kinley quotes called Revelation. So if it's possible, if someone could bring that up for me, it's the Dr. Kinley quotes uh, Revelation from June 10th. Thank you. All right. So, but I need you to go ahead and keep reading that chapter. Okay. Juan, uh, you can pull up your email if you get that email. If not, I'll get it. All right, that is yeah, Ephesians. Okay, thank you. That is Ephesians uh, 2 and 1. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom we all, we excuse me, among whom also we all had our deportment in times past in the lusts of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. So if we were to look up deportment, then we would see that one definition for deportment is lifestyle, right? So the, so what we were obsessed with in this life, the way that we lived, what brought us happiness or, or what we thought would bring us happiness, what we were pursuing <clears throat> was... Um, it, I would, I'll just use our terms we're familiar with it was all carnality it, it was it was all going to bring about not right if anything it was temporary what we had been conditioned to see as happiness but mm -hmm. um it was not anything that was going to be lasting or fulfilling right mm -hmm. go ahead <clears throat> um but Yahweh who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with the Messiah, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Yahshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And in heavenly places, so we, we talk a lot about uh, figuratively here, right, uh, in this class, um, these analogies, metaphors that are being drawn. And so here we get that up what are we talking about? What are we being asked to look at? We're being asked to look at our mindset, so to speak. I'll use that word um, because what's happening when we come in here, uh, and I think it was earlier, one of the scriptures that was called earlier, we don't have to get it. They were talking about the circumcision, right? Is that, and so remember now, uh, my mind is racing. So, when we have the uh, description in the Bible, um, we have Saul as the example, um, how he is blinded and um, how literally it plays out, right? That um, he is given this new sight, so to speak, right? His, his um, understanding is open. And so for us, that is happening spiritually, that we are being prepared to see this world and our presence in it and our personal identity, it's all being um, uh, re, what do I wanna say? Uh, we are being enlightened about what our purpose really is in this world, maybe, you thought it was by profession, oh, I'm a teacher. So maybe that's what I thought. I'm going to be a teacher and educate all the children in the world. And that's that's why I'm here, oh. right? Or maybe you thought that uh, it was being a mom or being a wife or whatever. And uh, even if you thought it was to serve your creator, because that was talked about earlier as well, you might not have known what does that really look like? What does he require of us to serve him, right? What does it mean to serve our creator in spirit 
if you actually knew, paid attention to that when you were introduced to that, right? And then that other big part about truth, what does that mean, right? So what he's saying here with these uh, sit together in heavenly places in Yahshua the Messiah, this is when we come, enter into this body, and so this will go into the email in a second, made in his image, right? So in the Elohim book that we're going through, they are it's twofold. It's it's talking about the physical body going according to a pattern, but it's also talking about your disposition, your heart and mind, your spirit, right? Mm -hmm. So it's all aligning to your creator. And so um, that is a, a process. And so that's what he's talking about. And in that alignment, in that refining, people were talking about that earlier, it's bringing you to a peace. And a part of that peace, a significant part of it, is letting go of the carnality that makes many of us miserable in this world. Many, much of what burdens us is what we consider to be a physical shortcoming. It is many of us, <laughs> until we move to a certain place, we're, uh, what keeps us sad most of the day is not, oh, I didn't, I didn't do my homework. I didn't read anything tonight. I'm just being real, right? Until he brings us to that place. That's not what's, what's uh, our point of uh, discontent it's usually often something carnal. I want a bigger house. I want a nicer car. I want a good retirement. I want this, I want that, right? But it's very seldom spiritual, right? Because many of us know that when we diligently seek him, we can, we can read one paragraph, two verses, and he can give us peace within that, right? Mm. That's how he works when we're seeking him out versus how long does it take you to get whatever that physical thing is that you've been desiring? And then how long are you happy with it before you go to the next thing? So let's go ahead. I'm sorry, like I'm racing. I'm sorry. Um, so let's go ahead and look at the, um, the transcript excerpt that was sent. <clears throat> sorry. This is uh, an excerpt that... Uh... Dr. Ronda Brazil sent out on June 10th. It's from a transcript called Mediator, Prayer, Book of Life, Immortality from 1974. All right, you want me to start at the beginning? Yes, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to um, stop you, so go ahead. <clears throat> okay. Dr. Kenley, the eighth chapter of Romans, reader, for whom he did foreknow, Dr. Kenley, for whom he did foreknow, now you see, I told you about that for now. See, he knew everybody that he's going to ever bring into the world. See, he did predestinate. Is that right? Reader, he also did predestinate. Dr. Kenley, that's right. Reader, to be conformed to the image of his son, Dr. Kenley. Now you see that now? For whom he foreknew, look at now. He did foreordain or predestined to be the image of his son. Now his son was made up like as a man is, like I am. I am a son of Yahweh, not a Christian, not a saint. I am a son of Yahweh, just like he was. Do you understand? And I hope you all are too. Whom he did foreknow, he also predestined. Now look, Yahweh foreknew in eternity. That's getting back in the book now. See, he also predestinated that everything come out by his son in corporalization. Come out, see, come on out by his son and come on down in the flesh. Now you pay attention to me because he foreknew and predestinated you to conform to the image of his son. Now a body is in an image, in an image. That fan there is an image. An image means something that's erected or constructed or built up or made. All right, read on, reader. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate, Dr. Kinley, that's right, to be conformed to the image of his son, Dr. Kinley. Now you see what he did? He foreordained you to be and predestined you to become conformed to the image of his son. Now listen, there's another son in business too, the son of perdition. 
He's in business, that son of perdition. But anyway, I ain't got time to fool with him. See, if we can get this straight, then we already know what the other one is. All right, read, Dr. Harris, reader, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Dr. Kinley repeats. Moreover, Dr. Kinley, now on top of all that, reader, whom he did predestinate, Dr. Kinley repeats, them he also called, Dr. Kinley, them he also called. Just a minute there. I'll tell you about that. Just a minute. Now, you know how come you're down here at this class, see? You know how you're, well, somebody say, well, I just made up my mind. I just want to come tonight. No, nah, no, nah, fellow. It ain't like that. Somebody said, well, I just love them folks. And then somebody said, well, I just stumbled into it. No, that's not the way it is. No man goeth to the Father except he draw him. And you can go to many another place and do many other things, but you don't go to the Father except you be drawn. And Yahshua the Messiah said, no man goeth to the Father but by me. Now, are you following me? All right, read on. Reader, moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. Dr. Kinley, them he also called. Reader, and whom he called, Dr. Kinley repeats, them he also justified, Dr. Kinley repeats, and whom he justified, them he also glorified, Dr. Kinley. Them he also glorified. Now, how about that? Now, look, folks, excuse me. Now, look, folks and all up here on this chart, here's the veil. I want to tell you, and you listen at what I tell you. See, now here's where you are. And now we're trying to get over here in immortal glorification, immortality, inherit eternal life, see? Now that's what the apostle is talking about, is you getting over here, pointing, he's pointing to the ages and dispensations chart. This is immortality, this line here. This is in the age to come, see? Now over here in this one here, you got the Holy Spirit in a physical body. Now then, this Holy Spirit in this physical body then this is what causes you to be immortal over here on the other side or in the next age yet to come. Now, we wrestle hard. We struggle hard to get you to see what Yahweh's purpose and plan is and to keep you from being deceived by the devil. We wrestle hard to do that. Now, look, I don't have to ask nobody about this. I do not have to ask. Yahweh revealed his purpose and plan to me. I don't have a thing to do no boasting and blowing and bragging about, not a thing. I would have been just like any other man if Yahweh had not showed me. I wouldn't have known any better at all. Well, now, since Yahweh showed me, what I'm trying to do is show and tell, show you and tell you. And that's the end of the quote. All right. Thank you. So what he um, <clears throat> goes on to say, there, there's a lot in that, but the big deal, right? is that he's saying you have to have this Holy Spirit in you, right? And that, that's, that's been the line, that's been the connection that everybody has been trying to make tonight. And he goes on, he, he talks about the fact, now there, there's a lot in this because I remember, um, but I'm watching my time, you know, there was some things that um, had been said in the class that I, um, attended where, you know, they were talking about, you know, no, your creator doesn't know you, things like that, you know, different things. But as previous speakers have said, anything that's said from the floor, you've been given the transcripts to go in and to do your own research. That is what's required of you in this class to see if the witnesses support that. Now, this says that he foreknew you. And it also said that he, um, to drop down quickly, it was foreordained and he drew, you were drawn in. So this is a divine invitation. It's not by happenstance, right? We want, and what we're not going to have time to get to is the section in the Elohim book where it talks about the natural man and he talks about what it means if you are a uh, spiritual right if you are no longer natural or carnal but you are spiritual and so it says that um the spirit of the messiah dwells in him giving him views disposition 
distractions and enjoyments. And so it's talking about when he goes on and says, uh, justified, right? Mm -hmm. You meaning you are made just. Okay. And so we talked about this, this likeness and image, physical body according to the pattern, but your your disposition, your um, attributal makeup, thank you, that's what I was searching for, it all has to align, and is, and he is going to make you just, he is working to strip that carnality away from you, and uh, the other part that it talks about in the Elohim book that's so beautiful is it talks about the, the peace that's mentioned in Ephesians, uh, that all you studying, you coming to class, you learning of your creator, that's your peace. That's your home. That's that's what brings you solace. Mm -hmm. and, and and getting to that place and feeling uh, the comfort that comes with this in the chaos that is our world. And it just keeps keeps spinning and spinning uh, is is the joy and the beauty of this. So can we, are we in a place where we feel like we are able to appreciate the fact that we have been drawn out of this world? We've been drawn out of this world and we've been given the opportunity to learn of our creator, to be one with him, to be in the body, uh, to really appreciate that gift and and everything that comes with it and so um i'll say this because a lot of people mentioned the elohim book tonight um whatever your thing is uh whether it's the elohim book whether you have a favorite pamphlet whether it's particular uh books in the bible that are appealing to you we we all want something that's going to excite us ignite us get us uh thinking and bring us peace when it comes to this gospel. And uh, what I've always found to be beautiful is that, um, you know, like as a teacher, I try to figure out like, okay, what is that thing for each of my students? But we have the teacher, right? We have um, the father and he knows all of us. And so he, he knows what that thing is that it's going to take to hook you on this gospel and to engage you. Um, but we want to make sure that our constant prayer is that we're putting him first and that we are seeking him uh, diligently and we understand that we what is required of um, having eternal life. And so just again, um, like I said, there was a lot on my mind. So hopefully some of that made sense uh, mm -hmm. because that time went really quickly but um so like I said I enjoyed all of the speakers um and uh hope you were able to get something out of it hallelujah hallelujah thank you very much Dr. Roberts and that will bring a conclusion to tonight's lecture we thank all of our speakers and all of our uh members for joining us we hold classes on zoom from 6 30 p.m to 8 30 p.m on Tuesdays and Thursdays and on Sundays from uh, 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we will close now with the doxology, which is taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong all glory, majesty, dominion, and power. For all times, now and ever, let us all say, Hallelujah. 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 That was a beautiful class. Beautiful class tonight. I